وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الأمين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما All praise is due to Allah, we praise Him. We bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. He is alone and He has no partners. And He is the aid and the assistant and the protector of the believers. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger. He was trustworthy. He was reliable, he was truthful, and he was honest. We ask Allah to exalt his mention and grant him peace, and his companions and wives, and all those who follow them on their path of righteousness until the day of recompense. O oh, you who have believed, be mindful of Allah and say that which is right and correct. Allah will rectify your deeds and forgive you your sins. And whosoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has already attained the greatest form of success. Brothers in faith, there are many questions that pop up in our mind. But we dismiss them because we lack knowledge. While it is from the Sunnah to dismiss certain whispers from the Shaitan that have to do with our belief. Because the Prophet ﷺ already informed us that the devil will continue to whisper nonsense in your head about the reality of Allah. And you keep questioning certain things about Allah until you reach the point where you say, who created Allah? And the Prophet ﷺ gave us the cure. And this cure is applicable to millions of problems that we face today in the world. And that is just stop. Seek refuge with Allah from the shaitan and stop. Many people don't like to stop. When one of us has issues with obsessive compulsive behavior, specifically in the spiritual sense of waswas, people that make wudu for 15, 20 minutes, because he's not sure that he did this right. Did I say Bismillah? Did I not say Bismillah? He begins again. Did I wash this part? I forgot. He starts again. They stay in the bathroom for half an hour, make a wudu for another half an hour, and they take one hour to finish the salah. Because the shaitan has completely taken over. The solution is stop. Just stop. It doesn't take a lot of work or a lot of resources or that you consult 1800 people or that you see doctors and consultants. It's a matter of resolve and determination. Just stop. A lot of things can be done if we just stop. Every smoker in the world who claims that he can't quit smoking is a liar. Because if he wants to stop, he would stop. He just doesn't want to. And sure we can come up with a lot of justifications as to why we can't stop. But the truth of the matter is, we can. However, we always wait for the disaster to come close, then we decide to stop. That's why if you were to catch any smoker who tells you, I've been trying for years, but I can't, tell him, listen, I'll strike a deal with you. I want you to imagine, 
hypothetically speaking that you went to a doctor and got some tests and according to the tests if you were to smoke one more cigarette you will die I challenge you to find someone who will say yes except a suicidal person who we don't care about to begin with you will meet, excuse my English, idiots who will say, well, I will smoke. Say, You want to commit suicide? Allah will deal with you on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. The average sound human being will tell you, I will stop. So what's the difference now? Death? So you were waiting for you to know that cancer is going to come or you will die for you to stop? You could stop now. It's the same will, it's the same determination. Except that you want to wait for the disaster to come around. Then you will do what you're able to do now. It's all a bunch of bluffings from the shaitan. He tricks us into these things and we buy them. We believe them. And we live our lives saying, Wallah brother, I can't. Wallahi, you can. You just don't want to. This applies on a million things that we do that we know are wrong. It's a matter of making that choice. So we say when you get these kinds of whispers, just stop. Make one wudu, one salah, and move on with your life. You will get used to it, and it will become something in the past. Otherwise, you will drive yourself crazy and you will drive the people around you crazy. So the Prophet ﷺ always gave his followers practical solutions. Practical solutions. When you start having these weird thoughts about Allah and you don't know where you're going with it, stop. Don't dwell. Don't delve on it and don't dwell into it. Nowhere to stop, nowhere to stop on the step on the brakes and change your direction. However, that said, it doesn't mean that we can continue to remain ignorant about the fundamentals of our deen and when certain questions that must be answered are posed, we don't answer them because supposedly we're trying to run away from having these wasawis. We say that is also incorrect. Rather, we should have answers. And these answers are based on understanding very basic ayat and the book of Allah. This khutbah is a reply to a question that someone sent to me on WhatsApp. And when you get these questions, you wonder. You wonder, who are you supposed to aid? The person asking you on behalf of the non-Muslim or the person himself. A brother's giving da'wah to a Christian or a non-Muslim. I'm not sure if he's a Christian. The Christian or the non-Muslim asks him the questions, some questions, that now the Muslim is in trouble, doesn't know how to answer. He reaches out for me, you, anybody to help him. You wonder, do I now have to fix the problem of this non-Muslim or you, my brother? Why don't you have an answer? If he asks you about some sophisticated matters of theology that has to do with uh, the Trinitarian belief of Christians and the history of Jesus, okay, not your field of expertise, you're not a debater, you're not among those who do comparative studies of religion, no problem. But someone asks you about why Allah created us and things at that level of, of basic understanding and then we're already struggling, hello. You shouldn't be giving da'wah at that stage if you don't know the answer. The conflict is why did Allah create certain people Muslims and certain people non-Muslims therefore making it easier for the poor Muslims. This is a problem. You were born a Muslim yeah, I mean, you got it good. He was born non-Muslim, he's already in struggle. Therefore, the 
there's lack of justice on the behalf on behalf of the divine. We say it's a very simple subject matter. What religion we're born into is irrelevant. If we don't adhere to the truth at the age of discretion. How many Muslims were born into Islam and then when they reached the age of puberty, they were gone out the window? Nothing to do with Islam. Except his name is Muhammad, Abdullah, Ahmad. But in terms of practicing, zero. And how many have a person been born into a non-Muslim family only to accept Islam and be better than the 20 Muhammads who were born into Islam and never practiced it? Whenever you come across issues of this complexity, if you want to consider this to be complex, you always have to lay down the foundations of the names and attributes of Allah. You never enter into this discussion without first establishing that Allah is Al-Adl. Allah is the most just. And when we know that Allah is the most just, and there are all these areas of the unseen that we cannot touch or see or sense, then all you have to do is submit to Allah Azza wa Jal and trust in Him that He deals with His slaves justly. He arranges their affairs justly. What appears to you that this person is being tested more than that person is completely subjective. You may see a poor person, a poor Muslim, who can't even who can't even pay his rent. And another Muslim has two Mercedes and one BMW parked in front of his villa. And then you say, SubhanAllah, Allah gave him so much and this brother is being tested. The truth of the matter is, both are being tested. But this poor person can be in a condition 60 times better than the rich one. Because his test is that he doesn't have money, his test is his money. And so in our limited understanding, we say, well, this is a good Muslim miskeen. This is an evil Muslim. Allah gave him and he deprived him. Ya akhi, back off. Let Allah handle his affair with his creation. What do you know will be the affair of these two on Yawm Al-Qiyamah? Do you know? You don't know. I don't know. No one knows. This is why Allah established we have made whatever is on earth as an adornment for people so that we may test them who is better indeed. So the actual provision, the money, the wealth, the position, all of this is also a test from Allah. It, there is not an indication that Allah is pleased with one of us or that He's satisfied that He made your bank account fat and He made His bank account empty. These are all from the affairs of the unseen. We don't involve ourselves. Similarly, if Allah made you born, be born into a Muslim family and He made another be born into a non-Muslim family, this is irrelevant. Because it's all within the dimensions of Allah's examination to a slave. We don't know about it. You, you can't put physical numbers on it. You can't try to calculate it mathematically and put numbers here, numbers here and come up with a total say, Wallahi, this is unfair. You can't. The dynamics of how this works is beyond human capabilities. It has to do with Al-Mudabbir, the arranger of affairs, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It gives us a peace of mind and relief to know that we don't have to worry about these things because if we were to worry, we would never get to anything. There was, there's no closure for this type of issue. The only closure, the only solution is belief in Allah and trust in Him. That's why we come across these ayat and it is not coincidental that on 
Jumu'ah. Specifically, we recite Surah Al-Kahf. So you can always remember, وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا And your Lord does not oppress anybody. No one on earth, no animal, no plant, no creation, no ins, no jinn will ever be oppressed by Allah ever. Not even in the slightest. From before they're born, during the time they're born, and until they pass away, and on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, never will one person be oppressed by Allah. Never. Once you understand that, then you can explain to the non-Muslim now. My friend, you cannot figure this out mathematically. This is a spiritual matter. It's a spiritual matter that has to do with your belief in your Creator. And the fact that I'm having this conversation with you, where I'm able to convey Islam to you, is evidence enough that your opportunity is right there in front of you to be guided. And for those who never, never received the message of Islam, someone can say, well, how is that fair for them? They were living in the jungle somewhere and no one ever told them about Islam. Even those, those who never came across the message, we have a solution for them in Islam. In the hadith of Al-Aswad in Sahih Muslim, that there are certain people who will come on Yawm Al-Qiyamah that never received the message of Islam. They were deaf, they had issues, sickness, whatever. They were away, or the time of Fatra, the time, the interval between the prophets where there was no prophethood, there was no message being delivered to the people. And Allah Azza wa Jal will test them on Yawm Al Qiyamah. Allah will test them on Yawm Al Qiyamah. They will not be automatically admitted to paradise, nor automatically admitted to hell because they never got the chance. They will be tested. The one test Allah will test them with will be a summary of what they would have done in this dunya. Even then, it is fair. So someone will not say, well, it's not fair, I had to go through six years of testing. He was tested once. Yeah, it's none of your business. Let Allah deal with this creation. Our duty is to believe in Allah, to trust in Him, to submit to Him. And then he, you will be, your heart will be at ease. You will be guided to the straight path. فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ Whomsoever Allah intends to guide, He will expand His chest for Islam. Allah will expand your chest, you will, will understand, it will make sense. That's why many non-Muslims enter into Islam. In spite of the propaganda against us, instead of the bad media, instead of the issues that we see among the Muslims themselves, in spite of all that, people continue to enter into Islam. Women going from being able to wear whatever they want, dress however they want, look however they want, entering into religion where they know they will be covered. And they're, they're now obedient to their husbands. Everything about their lifestyle is changing and will be changed. And they still say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. On daily basis, all over the world. It's Allah who guides. That's how you answer these questions. Don't fall into these traps. People try to trap you, make you doubt your own belief in Allah. So you start thinking, wait a second, that's true. I have it easy, he has it hard. No. No, it's all in Allah's, Allah's mecha mechanism of, of testing his creation. We ask Allah Azza wa to expand our chest and make us among those who listen to the reminder and follow the best of it. Aqulu qawli adha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiruh. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. الله عز وجل سأز من القرآن وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون. I have not created jinn and ins the humans and the jinn except to worship me. Yet Allah عز وجل also tells us الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. He is also the one who created death and life so he may test you who is best in deeds. There's absolutely no conflict between these two ayat. Because one ayah is saying that we were created to worship 
And another ayah is saying that we were created to be tested. And some people don't understand the correlation between them. And the simple answer is, worship is a test. When Allah says to test you, that includes calamities that befall you, and that includes act of worship that you're supposed to uh, perform, and it includes certain prohibitions that we're supposed to avoid. All of these three are actually a test and the purpose of creation. We were created so that we leave alone certain things. And we were created so we may do certain things. And we were created so we can cope with whatever Allah decreed will happen in this universe. And on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, we will be accountable to those exact three things. لِيَجْزِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسَاءُوا بِمَا عَمِلُوا وَيَجْزِيَ الَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا بِالْحُسْنَةِ As Allah says in Surah Al-Najm. On Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Allah Azza wa Jal to him belongs what is in the heavens and in the earth so that he may recompense those who did evil with what they deserve and those who did good with excellence. And it's interesting choice of words. When he spoke about those who did good, he mentioned that they will get husna. Whereas those who asa'u bina amilu with that which they did, it's a form of belittlement even in the choice of words. We seek Allah's forgiveness for our sins. Therefore, my brother in faith, when you're told to pray five times a day, that is a test from Allah. Are you going to pass or will you fail? When you're told to be obedient to your parents and dutiful and respectful, will you pass or will you fail? When you're told to keep your kinship ties and keep relations with your family as opposed to fighting over property and money and nonsense, will you pass or will you fail? When you're told to be kind to your neighbor and treat them nice so you don't throw your trash in front of their house or block them when you want to go and get some rest, will you pass or will you fail? And we have a list of items where each one of us has two boxes to tick, pass or fail, like a smart check for the car. Will you, will you pass or will you fail? If you fail, you can't drive the car in the streets. Certain things they tell you, go back and fix them. This is our condition in this dunya. In simple terms, it's like a car trying to pass the smog, the fahs, which is what everybody knows here. Either there are fixable things, we fix them and come back, or there's no hope, change the car. Or you will pass. Everything, whether it is we, something we have to do, something we must avoid, or when a calamity strikes. When calamity strikes, certain people know how to be behave. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Allahumma jurni fi musibati wa khlif li khayran minha. They know the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when a calamity strikes. And some people lose their mind. They lose their mind, they start wailing and beating, slapping themselves and, and, and going crazy, saying different things. Why me, oh Allah, why me? You're asking Allah, why you? This is how we are at the time of test. Either we will pass or we will fail. This is what you're supposed to communicate to a non-Muslim in simple terms. So tell him, don't, don't go into this area of he was born into a Muslim family, I was not born in a Muslim family, then this is not fair. None of your business, Habibi. Your business is, you have all these tests. Will you pass or will you fail? Worry about yourself, man. Fix yourself. Save yourself. Rectify yourself. Bring your own salvation. Don't worry about what Allah did to him and he did to her. Where are you now? Did you receive the message of Islam? Yes, obviously, because you're talking to a Muslim. What are you doing about it? That's what you need to worry about. And that's the objective and the goal of every person involved in da'wah. You have to reason. You have to simplify. Keep it basic. When you see someone trying to drift from the proper understanding and confuse you with ideas, say, say, wait, 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 go back to the basics. Always go back to the basics. The basics will always help you out. And our basics is Tawheed. That's what you need to communicate, Tawheed. 
In this case, the Tawheed is, Allah does not oppress anyone. Once established, all other questions can be answered effectively. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, zabit qulubana ala deenik. Allahumma ya musarrif al-qulub, isrif qulubana ala ta'atik. ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة انك انت الوهاب اللهم اغفر لنا وللمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الاخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصل اللهم وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين